In this video, we're going to unpack and explore six different types of research variables that you can understand what they are and how to use them correctly. Let's do it. Hey, Derek here from Grad Coach. If it's your first time here, the Grad Coach channel is where we discuss all things research related so that you can approach your project with confidence and competence. In this video, we're going to dig into the topic of research variables. We'll start by first explaining what a variable is, and then we'll look at six popular types of variables, specifically dependent, independent, and control variables. And then we'll look at moderating, mediating, and confounding variables. It's worth quickly mentioning that this video is based on an extract from our popular online course, Research Methodology Bootcamp. If you are new to formal academic research, you definitely want to check that out. And to say thanks for watching this video, we've got a 60% off discount offer just for you. If you're interested, you can find the link in the description. So let's start by addressing the question, what exactly is a variable? At the simplest level, a variable is any attribute that can experience change or can vary over time, hence the name variable. For example, the dosage of a particular medicine could be considered a variable as the amount of that dosage can vary. Similarly, gender, age or ethnicity could be considered demographic variables because each person varies in these respects. Research variables commonly form the focus within quantitative studies. Quite often, researchers are interested in how one variable impacts another variable and to what extent. For example, how someone's age impacts their sleep quality or how different teaching methods impact the average test scores for students. Variables also form the foundation of hypotheses. So as you can probably guess, it's really important to have a solid understanding of the variables in any study, especially if you're planning to do quantitative research. Now, there are many different types of variables and oftentimes there are multiple names for the same variable. To further complicate matters, one type of variable can also sometimes act as another type of variable. So this is unfortunately somewhat muddy territory, but we'll do our best to make sense of it all in this video. So let's start by looking at what we call the big three variables. First up is the dynamic duo of dependent and independent variables. At the simplest level, the independent variable is the cause and the dependent variable is the effect, or at least the thing that experiences the effect. In other words, when the independent variable varies, for example, increases or decreases, it causes the dependent variable to change in some way. Sticking with the earlier example, increasing the dosage of a specific medication, this would be the independent variable, could result in better or worse health outcomes for a patient, and that would be the dependent variable. Similarly, changing a teaching method, that would be the independent variable, could impact the test scores that students earn in a standardized test, and that would be the dependent variable. It's useful to know that independent variables can go by a few different names, including explanatory variables, because they explain an event or an outcome, and predictive variables, because they predict the value of another variable. Similarly, dependent variables are sometimes referred to as response variables or outcome variables. So don't be surprised if you see slightly different terminology used across various studies. Within scientific studies, researchers will typically pay very close attention to the dependent variable. Specifically, they'll carefully measure any changes to the dependent variable in response to the changes in the independent variable or independent variables. That said, it's not all that easy to be 100% sure that the independent variable is the actual cause of any given change. There could, for example, be other variables at play that are changing during the study. And this brings us to the third type of variable, which is the control variable. Simply put, a control variable is any variable that is intentionally held constant 
by the researcher to ensure that it doesn't have any influence on the other variables. As I mentioned, one of the major challenges in identifying causal relationships, in other words, relationships where one variable causes a change in another variable, is that it's difficult to isolate the impact of variables other than the specific ones that you're interested in. So to minimize this risk, researchers will attempt as much as possible to hold all other variables constant. For example, they might control the temperature, the time of day, the lighting, and so on. By doing this, they can reduce the risk of having other factors or other variables influencing the study's outcomes. Now, it is important for me to say that in order to confidently establish a causal relationship between an independent and a dependent variable, you'll need more than just a few control variables. Specifically, you'll need an experimental research design where you have complete or near complete control over both the environment and all of the variables that you're interested in. Even so, determining causality is never a simple task. But if you are keen to learn more about experimental research design and research design in general, we've got a video covering that. You can find the link in the description. Now that we've looked at the big three types of variables, it's worth quickly unpacking some other types of variables that you'll likely encounter. Specifically, we'll look at moderating, mediating, and confounding variables. Let's start with moderating variables. A moderating variable influences the strength or direction of the relationship between an independent and a dependent variable. In other words, a moderating variable affects how much or how little one variable affects another variable and also the way in which it affects it. For example, in a study investigating the impact of sleep deprivation on cognitive performance, in other words, how a lack of sleep impacts your cognitive ability, age could be a moderating variable. In other words, it may be the case that younger people are less severely impacted by a lack of sleep than older people are or vice versa. Similarly, a person's sex or any other physical attributes could play a moderating role in this equation. It's worth highlighting that while moderators can have an influence on outcomes, they don't cause them per se. Rather, moderating variables modify or moderate the existing relationships between other variables. This means that it's completely possible for two different groups with very similar characteristics but different levels of moderation to experience significantly different results from the same experiment. The next type of variable you need to know about is the mediating variable. Mediating variables are often used to explain the relationship between an independent and a dependent variable. For example, if you were researching the impact of education levels on income, then job skills could act as a mediating variable between those two things. In other words, while higher education might lead to higher income, the actual skills that are gained during that education are what make individuals more qualified for higher paying jobs. Put another way, a mediating variable is an in-betweener within a set of causal links. For example, if variable one impacts variable two, which then in turn impacts variable three, then number two would be the mediator between number one and number three. Last but not least, it's important to talk about confounding variables. A confounding variable, which is also known as a third variable or a lurking variable, is an extraneous factor that can influence the relationship between two variables of interest. In other words, it's an unmonitored or an unmeasured variable that has an unexpected impact on the relationship between two other variables. Most importantly though, the confounding variable makes it look as if those two original variables have a causal relationship when in fact they don't. This probably sounds a bit confusing, so let's look at an example to make this a little bit more tangible. Suppose you're researching the relationship between the amount of sleep that college students get, that would be your independent variable, and their academic performance, this would be your dependent variable. In this case, stress levels could be a confounding variable. In other words, if stress levels are naturally higher in students that sleep less because they're stressed and stress also affects academic performance, then stress levels would act as a lurking variable 
if it's not tracked within the study. And it would make it look as if there's a direct link between that sleep deprivation component and the academic performance. Now, given that confounding variables can lead you to draw the wrong conclusions, it's really, really important to identify as many of them as possible when you're conducting or designing your research. So always think really carefully about what factors may have an impact on your variables of interest and then try to eliminate or at least control for them as much as you can. All right, we've covered quite a lot of ground, so let's quickly recap. Independent, dependent, and control variables form the big three, and they're the most common ones that you'll likely come across. Changes in the independent variable cause a change in the dependent variable, while control variables are those variables that you as the researcher will intentionally hold constant throughout the study. Beyond the big three, moderating variables impact the strength and the direction of the relationship between other variables, while mediators are the in-betweeners in a causal chain of variables. Last but not least, confounding variables are those pesky variables that can have an unexpected effect on other variables, potentially leading you to draw incorrect conclusions. If you got value from this video, please do hit that like button so that more students can find this content. If you are currently working on a research paper or dissertation or a thesis, be sure to also subscribe to the channel for loads of practical tips and tutorials to help you fast track your research journey. Alternatively, if you'd like hands-on help with your research, be sure to check out our private coaching service where we hold your hand through throughout the research journey step by step. You can learn more about that and book a free consultation over at gradcoach.com.